Welcome to Audio Punch. Chris Henry here. And if you have not yet downloaded my Audio Punch Reaper podcast editing template by filling out the form linked in the description below, you should go do that because that's what this video is about. Okay, so the thing that I like about templates, uh, using templates for podcast editing is basically you only ever have to make a bunch of the decisions, the mixed decisions, the organizational decisions once. And if you have a weekly show or you work on a bunch of shows or uh, you just kind of like saving time, then getting templates set up for the shows that you make is a, a huge step in the direction of saving a bunch of time. Plus it removes tedium from the process. You don't have to set up a session, a new session, every single time you record an episode. You can open up a template, everything's already there, ready to go. So when you open the Reaper template, this is what you're met with. It's got three track folders, each with pre-made tracks inside. Each track has some preset effects inside. The way you'll use this template is either by importing audio you've already recorded on a portable recording device, or you can record directly on these tracks if you have your setup uh, equipped to do that. And real quick, just what we're looking at here is we've got four tracks built in for any audio that you have for the main content of your episode. You can simply duplicate these tracks by right-clicking and going to duplicate. If you need more room, you can delete some of them if you need less, just to keep things tidy. But every single one of them, when you open this template, will be the same. I have the intro set up almost exactly like the dialogue because I think it's useful to record your intro and outro matter after the episode's done, after the episode is edited. Uh, it's easier to keep it organized if it's separate from the rest of the audio. And also you're probably gonna end up processing it just a little bit differently because it was recorded somewhere else. So that's what that's for. And then the music here is set up so that any speech that you have going on in the intro or the dialogue master will automatically turn down any music you put in the music folder. It's easy to adjust if you need to, but you don't have to worry about actually doing all of that busing and organizing and stuff like that. So all you need to do when you use this template is import or record your audio and then tweak some of these effects to taste for yourself. So that is the basic outlay of this template. Now let's talk about what to do once you've recorded or imported your audio. I'm going to import some audio I already have recorded. We will insert it onto separate tracks because I happen to know that these tracks all go together. And as you can see, I have them <laughs> very thoroughly named in case I need to find them later. Uh, and then the, the first thing I do is just get these placed here. I like to leave when I'm editing just a couple of minutes doesn't have to be precise, of dead air here at the beginning, so there's room for me to record my intro later. You'll end up adjusting it after you edit anyway. So once I have this in, the first thing I do, really, after importing it, is I find somewhere where everyone is kind of talking and bantering together, and I just sort of listen real quick to each one. Okay, so now I've listened real quick to all of those. I have a sense of how loud everything sounds as it gets dropped into the template here, and I've got some notes in my head of of who um, who needs to be adjusted in what direction once all of these tweaks start to happen. Next thing we want to do is just tweak the preset effects here in the order that they affect the audio on each track, and then you're basically ready to edit. Uh, the first thing here is we need to open up Reefer, which is set up as a denoiser for this session, which it's kind of awesome that Reaper has this built in because denoising can be really important if you're not recording in an actual like radio studio or recording studio where, you know, they have engineered the entire building to reduce all of the background noise that you get from fans and refrigerators and all that stuff. So if you find that 
your audio is noisy, there's a lot of hiss, this is the plugin built into Reaper that you can use. Now, if you can afford it, get Isotope RX or Isotope Elements, I think has the denoiser in it as well. It's worth every penny, but we don't have that. We have built-in effects. And so we are going to select a bit of silence in our audio where nobody is talking. Now, ideally you would have recorded a couple of seconds of just silence during your recording session, but I forgot to do that this time. So we're gonna make do. We're gonna find a second of audio that is just dead quiet, no one's talking. We're gonna make sure we have our looped playback, playback set, and then come over here to Reefer on this track, which we opened by clicking the copy of the effect in the track here, and then clicking automatically build noise profile and hitting play. Just let that loop through a couple of times and hit stop. Now you can see here in, in the window up above my head that Reefer has built a, a little noise profile here. These are all of the bits that, of sound that are present when no one is talking. We will uncheck automatically build noise profile. Very important to do. And you are done with that track. We can hear the difference actually if we turn off the noise gate now you'll be able to hear it. It's pretty meaningful. So turn the noise gate back on for later. Now we're just going to do that for every track real quick. I will spare you the tedium with a fast forward that starts now. And we're back. Now, with all of this denoising done, we should be able to uh, turn off all our noise gates here real quick. So this is with all of them on and working. There's still some hiss, but that's sort of to be expected without, uh, without higher quality, more purpose-built stuff. But if we bypass all of these, now listen. Right? It's a meaningful difference. And now if we go back and listen to people talking here, that's pretty standard issue, like abandonment. So you can hear like my voice still sounds completely normal, but it's way less noisy than it would be with the, uh, the noise filter off. So there's step one, fairly straightforward. Step two, is you'll notice when you opened up your template, all of your noise gates here were bypassed, which is what it means when they look like this in your mixer window. That means that the effect is loaded, but it's not doing anything. You've turned it off. Now, if you find that um, a couple of things, one, if there's just if there's still just a little bit of noise in your track that, that, that you don't really like and you want to get rid of it, you can use the noise gate to do that. So you're still going to hear the noise when someone's talking, but it won't be there when they're not talking. So that can be a, a pretty effective way to further clean up your audio. One other thing that you can use a noise gate for is for cutting out bleed. You know, you can see here, I'm talking, but I'm getting into everyone else's microphone. Now that can happen if you're sitting too close together, if your microphones are too close together, I'm gonna get into your mic almost as much as I'm getting into mine when I talk. Or also if you have someone like me who uh, talks a little louder than everyone else, um, which is something I'm personally working on in these sessions, specifically because it's a pain in the ass to edit later. Uh, those are a couple of reasons why you might hear some of, you know, person A in person B's microphone. It can be mitigated if you have the space or the acoustic setup, but uh, we didn't for this because we kind of just recorded it on a whim. And so we're going to fix that with a noise gate. Now, one thing to be aware of when you are setting up a noise gate, click this check mark to turn the effect on. One thing to be aware of is any effect that's sort of just working off of a set of basic instructions is prone to error that you don't notice unless you go through and listen to the entire thing. And so what I recommend doing is always err on the side of caution. Um, if you're going to hear a little bit of me 
through this. Uh, I'd rather have that and make sure that all of what Austin says comes through than make sure that none of what I say in his microphone comes through, but it's clipping off the end of his sentences because he trailed off. So to set up a noise gate, you want to select first click this S to solo the track and then select a bit of audio that has both the area you don't want and the area that you do want. And you're just going to loop through it. It can be a little annoying, uh, but you get used to that in service of clean audio. So we've opened this up. We'll go over the gate real quick. These are controls you don't have to touch unless you know what they do. Talking about noise gates is a completely separate video. This is threshold. And this you do want to touch because what you're going to do is pull this down as you listen until the bad audio is completely gone and only the good audio remains. So we'll listen right now. Yeah, it sets the tone. It gives the player something new that they learn. And why is so you can see or you can hear how that worked, right? There is clearly audio in this part of the track, but you could see here that it wasn't going above our threshold. And this slider actually represents the threshold as well. So it's both setting the threshold level and acting as a physical marker relative to these meters. So watch what happens as I pull it down. Like that sort of thing can be exciting for the radio. You can hear me. Yeah, it sets the tone. It gives the player something new that they learn. Now watch what happens as I push it up. And why is it behind me now? Like that sort of thing can be exciting. Yeah, it sets the tone. It gives the player something new that they learn. And why is it? So that's basically, that's all you have to do to set up a gate. Now this is an extreme example. I am really loud in Austin's track. Um, I would say if you find yourself setting your gate any higher than negative 20 decibels, you're probably going to want to just set it at like negative 20, negative 25, and then bring in some of the dry signal to offset that. The effect of that will be you are still turning down the bad audio quite a bit, but you're not going to completely chop off some of what, you know, the actual speaker on that microphone is saying. So, Again, we're going to fast forward while I set this on everyone's track. And we'll be back in... However long that took. Uh, okay, so noise gates, as you can see, they're a little bit fiddly. You also probably noticed me fiddling with some of the other controls there. That's just in service of, of further tweaking uh, this template before I have sent it off to you fine folks. And in fact, I might version these things up over time. Who knows? Maybe not. So once your gates are set up, the next thing is to set up your compressors. Now what a compressor does is it reduces the dynamic range of a signal and the effect of getting your compressor dialed in here is that your podcast will be easier to listen to uh, in most of the scenarios where people listen to podcasts. You know, if you've, if you've ever listened to, um, you know that, that, scenario where you're watching a movie and the dialogue is quiet and the explosions are really loud and you're constantly turning the volume up and down, a compressor is like automatically turning that volume up and down really, really fast. Now, in a movie, in a movie theater, that kind of dynamic range is really cinematic and you can hear everything because it's loud as hell in the movie theater. But then when you're trying to watch it on your TV, when you're aware of your neighbors and your wife is sleeping or whatever, that's when you, you start to be like, no, 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 I want this. I want the dynamic range. I want the loud stuff to be closer to the quiet stuff. And then you bring the whole level of that back up and it creates a scenario where you don't have to have this podcast cranked in order to hear what people are saying, which is especially useful, you know, listening in the car or on headphones or while you're doing something else, you know, that's, that's the technical reason why you might want to have a compressor set up. And the artistic reason is just, in my opinion, it helps, it helps you sound closer to the audience. Um, there are a number of other things that go into that, but 
but by and large for me, tasteful, not too harsh compression kind of elevates the overall production value of your show. So I'm going to do the same thing here. We're going to talk you through setting it up on Austin's voice, and then I'm going to fast forward through the rest. It's the same principle. So when you open up a compressor, this is what you're looking at. Now here, you don't have to touch. Again, just like with the denoiser, pretty much the only thing you're going to have to fix here is the threshold. The lower the threshold, the more compression you're getting. We'll do a whole other video on compression later, I am sure. For now, the lower the threshold, the more compression you're getting. If you've recorded your audio at a decent level, you're probably going to set this threshold somewhere between negative 20 and negative 30. And I'll tell you what to look out for uh, here as I'm editing this stuff. So we're going to move this up above my head. And we're going to select a big bit of Austin's audio here. And we're going to loop it through as we adjust his compressor. The dichotomy in uh, Trencherman's psyche, because again, as he loses his essence, he becomes more and more the beast. And I feel like a lot of what he's doing is kind of trying to strike that balance. OK, so the first thing we're noticing here is we're clipping. And that is not ideal. But this is the output. So all that means is our output is too loud. So to compensate for that, uh, you can either at the beginning of this process, just turn down the volume pre effects. If you look up how to do that in Reaper, or this is your first sort of line of defense against clipping. You don't want clipping. In fact, on these tracks, you kind of want the peak to be somewhere around negative six. So we're going to pull our wet down about four and our dry down about four. So that keeps the ratio between wet and dry, which just means wet is the signal with the effect. Dry is the original signal and these get mixed together so that the effect isn't too strong. By pulling them down the same amount, we're keeping the difference in volume between the two roughly the same. It's not exactly because decibels are logarithmic, but for our purposes, it's going to be pretty close. The dichotomy in uh, Trencherman's psyche, because again, as he loses his essence, he the dichotomy in uh, Trencherman's I'm going to pull it down even a little bit more. Another two on each one. The, di the dichotomy in uh, Trencherman. OK, so what I was listening for here is that, uh, you know, there's that lip smack, which forms kind of a, a peak, which is going to be one of the louder things that got into the mic. And that was peaking just above negative six here. So that's good enough for me. This is an inexact science, and we're going to be able to fine tune uh, the, the mix levels later. The dichotomy in uh, Trencherman's psyche. Uh OK, so the next thing we're going to do here is adjust the sound of the compressor by pulling the threshold down. I just want you to listen to what happens as I do this. It's really subtle. If you can't really hear a difference, then just take that as a lesson that leave it at negative 20 and you're probably fine. Uh, another thing to note here is if you see this meter kind of uh, this is your gain reduction meter, if it's kind of popping, if it's bottomed out here, then you might want to move your threshold back up a little bit. The dichotomy in uh, Trencherman's psyche, because again, as he loses his essence, he becomes more and more the beast. And I feel like a lot of what he's doing is kind of trying to strike that balance as well, because the more that you use your Zunu Qua abilities, the more that you feed on these other things, the more you're giving into these kind of urges that the dichotomy. OK, I kind of like that. Um, so we're going to leave that alone and I'm going to go through and edit everyone else's here real quick and I'll be right back as soon as as soon as I can. <laughs> Okay, this is a good point to come back because what I'm hearing now is what I just did is I went and massaged all of the compressor settings, the threshold and the wet dry mix so that everyone was kind of peaking around the same level. Now, it's 
it's really hard to, with compression and a wet dry mix, get levels to be exactly where you want to be. So the next thing I do is I go real quick and I switch between everyone talking and make sure it just feels right because it's at this point in the mix that you can get really bogged down in what the level, what the meters are saying. And it's also at this point in the mix that you should kind of stop looking at the meters and just start listening. If someone sounds a little louder than everyone else. There's a million reasons why that could. I happen to know with Eric, he tends to speak closer to the mic when we record these casual things. And as a result, there's some proximity effect, which makes him sound louder. So even though the meter is measuring the same peaks or thereabouts, he's going to feel louder. Um, you can do some fine tweaking after you've got everything sort of looking the same on the meters. Just listen through a couple of times, make some some top level adjustments here because what these uh, volume sliders do by default is they adjust the volume of the track after all of the, effect, the effects have been applied. So that's how you get your final mix in. Now, there is one more effect in the chain here, which you may or may not use. Um, I like to go through and do a little bit of EQ just because uh, different people sound uh, different. <laughs> which that sentence sounds obvious when you say it out loud. But now when you open this up uh, in this template, I have only three of these bands active. One, you can leave alone. All that's there to do is get rid of some low rumble. No one's voice does much below this frequency level. So we just cut it out to have cleaner audio. Two is set to a frequency where most people's like chesty, bassy, you know, radio voice comes from. If you boost that, they will sound a little bit meatier. If you cut it, they will sound a little bit less meaty. What I have here at range three is this is kind of centered around where the presence range of a lot of voices is. So for speakers like Austin and me, a lot of our voice is in that upper mid range. And part of that is I've noticed that trained vocalists, trained voiceover artists, they speak from their chest, like what I'm doing right now, which is not natural for me at all. Uh, the sound is coming from here. It's coming from here, right? But my normal mode, the sound is actually coming from my head and that gives it a little bit more high mid range. And so the way you can combat that is by pulling EQ in this band down a little bit. Now I've already got everything here kind of tweaked the way I like, but what I will do real quick is we'll listen to Austin. As you can see up above my head here, um, I have boosted the lows a little and cut the highs a little. Good rule of thumb for EQing, I think, is subtlety is better. If you start mashing the EQ to try to adjust the sound uh, too far away from how it was actually captured, it's going to come out sounding muddy or unclear or just over-processed. So don't think of EQ as something to drastically change the sound of someone's voice necessarily. Instead, start out by thinking of EQ as a way to just nudge things in a more favorable direction. So check this out. We're going to listen to Austin here and I'm going to just turn the EQ on and off as we go. Well, you guys had mentioned you didn't want to do uh, another like heist or something like that. You wanted to do something a little bit different. And uh, I noticed that the planes usually aren't uh, explored too much in a lot of actual. As you can see, it's a subtle difference, but it's kind of a meaningful one. Uh, if you're really sort of clued into these sounds, it does a lot, but it won't sound like it's doing a lot, if that makes any sense. Over time, your ears will develop a sense for this sort of thing. Um, when in doubt, err on the side of caution and don't boost or cut more than, say, four decibels in either direction. Consider four decibels to be kind of a lot of EQ. And that about wraps up the template here. Um, one other thing to pay attention to is uh, a couple of other little abilities that I've baked in here. Anything you put in the music tracks will automatically be ducked, turned down by any of the vocals, any of the spoken word in the 
dialogue or intro tracks. So for instance, I have this pre-recorded intro here, which I'm going to pull, whoops, we're gonna turn ripple editing off and I'm gonna pull this intro track much closer to the beginning. I'm going to twirl this folder closed so I can see just the music and we'll pull in the boilerplate Crit Squad intro music, cut it down, turn it down. Get a fade out there at the end, maybe zoom in just a touch and change that fade <clears throat> to a bit more of a, an S curve there. And let's just solo this and, and make sure. Yeah, that's still a little bit too loud. The intro music is doing two things here. One, it's kind of cueing the listener into how loud this program is going to be. And two, it's, you know, it's a style choice. Every episode of Crit Squad since like the end of the first year starts with the same music uh, under the intro. So that's what we do here. I'm going to pull this in and now we'll listen. Hey everyone, Chris here, just dropping another bonus episode, and uh, similarly, we'll just get right out. So you see how the music automatically turned down when the voice came in? Let's listen one more time. Hey everyone, Chris here, just dropping another bonus episode. Yeah. So that's a really, really handy feature, and you can see uh, the way the, these meters are set up over on the right. You kind of want uh, the loudest thing to not really get much higher than the negative six here. Uh, that is a sign that you're mixing this to the right volume. So we're just gonna check the volume here. The theme song will start now. All done. And that's pretty much all there is to this template here. You've got built-in organization, you've got built-in effects, and you've got built-in ducking and bussing so that any music you put in, you won't have to manually mix it up and down. And I'll show you just one more thing. If you visit the Music Master, and open the compressor on the Music Master, this is where you can adjust how much the music turns down when someone talks. And the way you do that is just like adjusting any other compression. The lower this threshold is, the quieter the music will be when the voice kicks in. Hey everyone, Chris here, just dropping another bonus episode. And uh, similarly, we'll just get right out of the way with the intro here. So you can adjust to taste that way. And that's our template. I hope you find it useful. I hope that as you use it, you will learn different things that you like to do for your episodes, your podcast, and you'll take this template and make it your own. That's the whole point. And thanks for downloading it. I hope it helps. We'll see you next time.